Hello and welcome to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and the question of the day is, what do I have time for? I have limited time before I need to start on my doll for my Patreon collab, but I still wanted to try to tackle another project. I took a look at the seemingly endless list of dolls I want to make and picked out a few that I was excited about. For various reasons, I eliminated these and wound up with a cyberpunk inspired doll. So now that we have a direction, let's get started. While I was digging around in my stock box for a doll to use, I first grabbed the Scara Screams. I really like her face shape and I've only painted her once before, so I thought she was going to be a good choice, but once I've grabbed my fabrics and I realized almost all of them have a green shift to them and that would just be too much green, I think. So I pulled out this Claudine instead. She already has the shaved sides like I'm wanting, plus I can grab these gloved hands from a different Claudine and use those too. And now that I have my perfect victim, it's off with her head. I use my electric shaver to remove the bulk of her hair. I shave it down to a short stubble. This hair was coated in glue too, so I knew I was going to have a mess on my hands. With her hair removed, she's now going to take a dive head first down into a cup of boiled water. After a few minutes in the water, her vinyl gets nice and squishy and the head pulls right off. I use my flathead screwdriver to scrape down the inside of the head just to loosen up that glue and the remaining plugs. This doll was actually really stubborn. These plugs just didn't want to loosen, and I think it's because they use the same amount of glue in this head as they do in the normal heads, even though she had a third of the hair. Once I finally managed to loosen up all those plugs, I use my needle nose pliers and remove it all from the neck hole. It was super gross and sticky. I use 100% acetone and remove all of the factory paint. Now to address the flocking on the sides. Normally, a soak in hot water loosens up the flocking, but this one was a bit more stubborn. I soaked a cotton ball in some acetone and gave it a good scrubbing, and it came right off. Now with her completely clean, I've cut a hole in the back of her head, and I'm going to be embedding a magnet back there. I'm going to place it right in front of the lips, and we'll get more into that later on. I initially did this with hot glue, but it did come loose later on, and I wound up having to go back in with some epoxy sculpt. Learn from my mistakes. With my magnet in place, I can now glue the scalp back together. This was my first time using this particular glue and it works so much better than the kind I had previously used. This is the Gorilla Super Glue with the brush and the nozzle. The hold is much better on this. I like it a lot. I give it an extra coat on the outside of the cut just to ensure that it's on there very well. Now to prep some yarn for her hair. I plan for her haircut to be pretty short so I don't need very much so I just wrap it around a couple of fingers and then cut it to length. Then I separate these out into their separate strands. Once I have them all separated, I loop them onto a barbecue skewer and can get them brushed out. I brush it out with a pet hair brush and I do it on the front and the back so I make sure it's pretty silky. I use my flat iron to straighten it out and make it nice and smooth. Now it's time to get rooting. I take one of those strands and I'm going to divide it into three pieces because it is rather chunky. I slide it onto the needle tool and then plunge it down into the head. I'm only rooting right around the hairline because I'm going to fill in the middle with some wefts. I tend to make it too poofy when I work with yarn so this helps me keep it on the thinner side. With all the rooting complete, I'm going to secure those plugs with a bit of liquid fusion glue. Squirt it down into the head and swirl it about making sure to touch all those plugs. Then I make some wefts out of the remaining hair. I squirt out a thin line of glue and then lay out the brushed out yarn. I make sure the ends of the yarn are thoroughly coated and then I leave this to dry. Now we move on to the clothing, and I had fully intended on actually making this out of cloth and had all of my fabrics picked out, but as you can see, this bodysuit turned out to be utter garbage, and it was going to take way more revisions than I had time for, so I decided to bust out the trusty epoxy sculpt and sculpt her bodysuit onto the doll. I have sketched out what I want the bodysuit to look like, so I am going to be applying epoxy sculpt to all of these seams and areas of transition to have the appearance of fabric on the doll. I don't want to build up a really thick layer of epoxy sculpt on her because that's going to be way too much sanding. We want to keep it as thin as possible. 
I work slowly and in small sections so that I don't mess up other areas I've already sculpted. If I just tried to do this all in one pass, I would mess up areas I had just sculpted. I do try to keep it as smooth as possible in the sculpting phase, but no matter what I do, it's going to require a lot of sanding. And that's nobody's favorite, so we might as well eliminate as much of that work as we can. And I wanted to say a big thank you to my supporters over on Patreon. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Stephanie L., Dollicious, Sophie, Amber S., Awkward Burb, Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Kitsy, Oak Magpie. I really love getting to share all of my trials and tribulations and giving you a peek behind the scenes. If you are interested in supporting me over on Patreon, please be sure to check out the link in the description box below. Now after all the tedious sculpting, the bodysuit's finally done. I did give her a good sanding off camera, but I did that outside because I didn't want the mess in the house. The bodysuit now just needs a paint job, and I get started with doing a base layer of black. I'm using the Vallejo Model Color Air, and I highly recommend this paint. It goes on very smooth and opaque, and leaves behind very few brush strokes. With the paint dry, I'm going to add in the accents now, and I'm going to be painting a strip down the very center and up around the hips of UV nail polish. This gives me a surface to apply some mica powder to. I sealed the mica powder in with another layer of UV polish, and I also glossed up a few other areas just to have them be glossy black. This is something that I'm super proud of. This is cut out on my Cricut, and it's only about two millimeters high, but it spells out Lady Dynamite Creates in Japanese. And I'm going to be attaching this onto some three millimeter ribbon. It was utterly nightmarish to weed, but I'm so happy with how it looks. Holographic vinyl's just the best. Now we're going to get the jacket put together. We have the two front pieces that we're going to be attaching to the back piece at the shoulder seams. And we're going to take the sleeves and we're going to gather up the bottom edge and attach the cuffs and those little ribbons that we just made. With that all together, we can gather up the top edge of the sleeves and we can attach them into those armholes. Now we can close up the side seam by turning them with right side spacing and we're going to sew up the side seam as well as the length of the sleeve. Now I'm going to finish off the front edge and the neck hole here. I'm going to apply a bit of fabric fusion glue and use a bit of heat to set that hem in place. You'll notice there's a seam down the middle of the back of the jacket now, and once I fitted this on the doll, I noticed it was a little bit too big, so I did need to take it in just a bit. The final thing this jacket needs is a bit of iridescent trim to the bottom of the jacket. With that, the jacket's done, and I'm super happy with how it turned out. It's so pretty and shiny. Now let's see what kind of cyber accessories we can dream up for this little hacker. 
The first piece I start with is the gas mask, and I've got this modeled and printed in resin, but I do want to take some steps to protect her face after it's painted. I place a piece of stretchy fabric over the head, and I apply a liberal amount of glue. Now with a bit of epoxy sculpt, I'm going to embed the magnet into the gas mask. I've left a hollowed out area here so that I could fit it more perfectly to the face and allow room for the magnet. I was a bit overzealous with the amount of epoxy sculpt I needed in here, and wound up having to dig a bit out to get it to be the perfect fit. With the epoxy sculpt cured, I can now add the fabric in as a lining and just cut away the excess. And you can see the magnet holds it nicely to the face and has a really good hold. I can shake it about and it doesn't fall. The gas mask of course needs to be painted, so I bust out the acrylic paints and get started on that. The neon colors that I'm using is actually the Anita fluorescent that glows in the black light. I usually try to avoid using craft paints because it takes so many coats of paint just to get it opaque. And of course, this was no exception. This took about six coats just to where it didn't look streaky anymore. It was awful. Do not recommend it. Now that it's fully painted, I'm going to secure a bit of Scooby-Doo wire, which I have strung a LED that's wired all the way through. Now the backpack. I went through about five revisions on this backpack and had to wind up changing it several times just to fit my needs. I first drill out two shallow indents on the back plate. These are going to be spaces that are going to hold magnets. With the magnets installed in the back plate, I'm now going to mark the other two magnets so that I know which way they go in. It's always best to mark these because it's truly awful if you've spent all that hard work and you installed the magnet upside down. All four magnets are installed and you can see it's a perfect fit and stays on really well. And just like before, I now get started on the paint job. And since this is going to be a backpack, she does need to be able to take it on and off, so we need some straps. I modeled three small squares so that I could use those to thread the straps through. I placed lengths of ribbon into the top two squares, and then I secure those in place with a bit of super glue. I measure the length and secure the bottoms of them as well. For the tanks on the backpack, I have actually printed those in clear resin, but I do want them to have the appearance of fluid inside them. So I'm mixing up some UV resin and some mica powder to mix in there. Now I can add in my LED light, and I'm securing it with a bit of UV resin. I give it a quick test and you can see it's a beautiful blue color. Of course, now we need to assemble all of these parts. I use super glue to secure the tanks in place. I thread the wires up and into the backpack because this is going to be the hidden compartment for our battery. I also need to secure the other end of the Scooby wire from the gas mask because the gas mask is going to be attached to the backpack too. I like to think of it as a really fancy oxygen tank. Now to get this all wired up and let it be known, this is not an electronics tutorial. I have passable knowledge at best but I am going to be wiring this in a parallel circuit. So I'm going to bundle all of my red wires together and then all of my black wires together. I'm also using heat shrink tubing to protect and insulate my wires. Before I seal my wires together, I do want to do a quick test just to make sure everything's still working properly. 
If you are looking into using LEDs in your work, I do highly recommend checking out Evan Designs. Their shop is really awesome and it's become my go-to. They even check your project order to make sure that you're getting compatible parts. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just really like their stuff. Now I neatened up all those wires and I have my backpack completely finished. There's even a magnetic spot to hang the gas mask when the doll's not wearing it. Now for the shoes, and of course we needed some cool cyber aesthetic shoes. I jumped in and as quickly as I could got these modeled and printed, and I'm really happy with how they turned out. They were actually the dynamite tier reward for March for my patrons. This style is not available in my Etsy shop just yet, but if you are interested in shoes for Monster High, I have a plethora of different style shoes for you to customize. And here they are all painted, and I love how they turned out. I do wish that neon paint wasn't quite such a pain to work with because it looks really cool. And now it's face-up time. Here's all the products that I've used on her face, but if you're interested, a complete list is down in the description box. I've prepped the face with three coats of Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat. I wait 30 minutes between each layer before spraying again or starting work. The MSC gives the surface of the vinyl a paper-like texture so that the watercolor pencils and pastels have something to grip onto. The first thing I always jump into is just getting my eye shape down. I tend to erase a lot when I do this, so I find that if I've got pastels already down, I'm just erasing work and it's pointless. And as you can see here, I erased a bunch. I kept having trouble with the iris and the pupil placement just not looking good, and I had eventually done so much erasing that the pencils just weren't adhering anymore. Instead, I put down a flat white color, and I'm just going to come back to those on another layer. And you can see the areas that I'd done so much erasing on, when I'm putting down the white, still didn't want to take the white. I really didn't know if I was going to finish this doll in time. I was worried I was going to have to shelf her for a bit because we've had so much rain that I didn't think I was going to get the face up done. Luckily, I found some breaks in the rain and was able to spray her and get her finished. We've had so much rain though, it's been ridiculous. My backyard has just been a marsh for the past two months. I move on and add some eyelid creases as well as some details to the waterline. When I'm satisfied with this base layer of pencil work, I'm going to coat her completely with a colorless blender and then get started on my pastel work. I wanted her makeup to be very bold and I wanted to use shades in her eyeshadow of pink, purple, and blue. However, I would need to build this up slowly over time. I know this highlighting looks insane, but trust the process. Mr. Super Clear pulls this color way down. I also do a good bit of blending this out as well. I wanted her lip color to be very bold, so I've chosen this dark. It's almost a black, but it's more hued towards the blue purple. I'm also adding in a few of the detail lines and lip creases here. Before I spray for layer two, I'm adding a bit of color variation into her skin tone with blues and yellows. And on layer two, I start out fresh with her eyebrows because they're going to require a lot of erasing and I don't want to erase any of my hard work. Now to give those eyes one more go, and I'm much more successful this time. I chose to go with the blue because I wanted to keep it in the color family that I had chosen. Her primary colors are pink, blue, and purple with pops of yellow here and there. Although I do want to use the yellow sparingly because it's just supposed to be an accent. After I finish blocking in the eyes, I give it one more seal and get started on the final layer, layer three. I jump right in and begin to add in her upper and lower eyelashes. I'm using my harder cord pencil, the Faber-Castell. I find that I have a bit more control because they give me finer lines. And once I have my lines in place, I can use a different pencil to darken them up. I begin adding some variation of color and details into the eyes. The 
final thing she needs is her catch lights and highlights to her waterline. And I always try to do this with either watercolor or gouache paint because if I mess up, I'd like to be able to erase that. And that's not something I can do with acrylics. I give her three final layers of Mr. Super Clear and then I can get started on her hairstyling. As you might have remembered, we left a big bald spot in her hair because we only rerouted her hairline. Now we're going to fill in that area with some wefts and I'm just gluing these in place. I change the direction of the wefts once I get to the crown of the head. Now to start cutting and styling the hair. I find to get a tapered edge, the easiest way is to pull the hair straight up and then I take my layering scissors and cut them across. This is going to give the ends a tapered look when I pull them down to the sides. To further enhance this, I am also going to razor these with an X-Acto blade. Just be very careful because once you cut it off, it's gone and you also don't want to cut yourself. I'm going for a shaggy wolf cut, so it's a pretty easy style to achieve. The sides of the hair are going to have a shaved look, so to achieve this I'm going to be flocking it. I first lay down a layer of glue and then I sprinkle my flocking on top of that. I dust away the excess and I wind up having to do this a couple of times to make sure that it's nice and thick. And now you'll remember, this is where we started. And here's where we ended up. I wanted to say thank you so much for checking out this video. It's always a blast for me when I get to create something so fun and I always love working with LEDs. If you did enjoy the video, please be sure to give it a like and all that jazz. You know the drill. Pixie is unfortunately no longer available. One of my Patreon members took advantage of the first offering and she snagged her up before she had a chance to go on sale on my Etsy shop. But I do have a couple of other dolls available for purchase if you're interested. Thanks for watching and remember, always be creating!